Hi guys, Squall here, and welcome to my first flight, or first look, whatever you want to call it, in Dovetail Games Flight School. Now this, as it says on the screen, is a preview beta build, not for distribution. Um, what that basically means is, uh, the build that I'm using right now has been sent out to select individuals, I'm one of them, and we can take a look at it, but I must warn you, this is preview, pre-release material, so any kind of bugs or glitches or weird things that you might see, uh, do bear that in mind that it's not yet released when I'm looking at it and hopefully things should be fixed in time for the release. Now, what is Dovetail Games Flight School? Well, it's basically aimed very squarely at people who are new to flight simulation, want to get into it, don't really know how, all that kind of thing. Uh, it's built, it's effectively the next iteration of the FSX engine. Uh, it's a 64-bit engine underneath with like, you know, Orbex scenery and all that kind of thing. Uh, and it's also a kind of a taste of the new flight simulator that they're bringing out later this year. So when we look at this, we can kind of get a feel for what might come later in the year. This product, though, is aimed, like I say, at brand new flight simmers. It's not aimed at people who are experienced at flight simming. So if you are experienced, then, well, maybe you'll learn something, but it's fairly unlikely. I'm going to show my settings first. Uh, I've gone through. Uh, I have to say the, the UI side of this is pretty decent. Like, the way it all works is quite slick, you know, I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, down here you've got your settings, you've got your graphics, uh, which I thought I'd show you briefly so you can see. I've got everything on Ultra, so anything you see is maxed out at Ultra. I'm using my a single 980 Ti graphics card, 1920 by 1080 um, That's it, really. The aircraft labels are turned on. Uh, in the sound settings, I've just wound the voice down a little bit. You know, the music's there. Controls are pretty straightforward to configure. Uh, you can choose your controller type here. I've got three controllers plugged in, my, my uh, HOTUS joystick, my HOTUS throttle, and my crosswind rudder pedals. And you just choose the control that you want. Uh, you might go up here and choose axes, and then you can just scroll down and say, right, there's my rudder axis. Move your, throt move your uh, feet around and it'll configure it. You could easily use, you know, an Xbox controller if you if you don't have a HOTUS or pedals, anything like that. Uh, then realism settings. For every flight that I'm taking, I've got it on hard difficulty, which means the flight model is maxed out, uh, but there are no random failures, but it won't tolerate any crashes or, you know, you can damage the engine or that kind of thing. That's it, really. That's it for the settings side of things not too difficult to configure there are two other things that you can do sorry three other things you can do uh, flight training missions and free flight uh, we'll come to free flight in a minute i'm going to take a little flight and you know we'll have a look around and i'll show you some stuff i've got about probably about eight to eight to ten hours of flying under my belt now in this thing with the various lessons that i've been doing um but i'll do a quick free flight and i'll show you that in a second flight training is what it says it is um you've got some lessons over in here, which are a little bit more difficult. The starter lessons are here. You will see, I'll leave a link to the separate playlist. I've, I'm going to play through all of these videos here, uh, all of these lessons here in separate videos. Uh, so you'll see that I've pretty much done them all apart from the final one, uh, which I can't do until I've unlocked uh, over three hours of solo flight time. Now, I've only taken one solo flight so far, and so I've only got 20 minutes, and none of these lessons count towards that solo flight time. You can only do that in the solo flying. But I've done all of these. They're all recorded. Uh, you can watch them in separate videos. Uh, there are five lessons in, in that set there, and there's another, I think it's eight or nine, something like that, uh, nine lessons over in here. You can see I've done six of them already. Uh, so they're kind of things that take you through various... Um, let me just quickly show you that while I'm here, just so you get a feel for what they are. You can see traffic patterns, steep turns, power stalls. Uh, you do these ones after you've done the other ones. The other ones are basic takeoff and maneuvers and that kind of thing. These are more advanced stuff, particularly like the VOR navigation side of things, uh, which I can come to in those lessons. You can watch those. Then you've got the, the missions. These are kind of random things. I've only done one of these so far, which is this one, Icing Conditions. Uh, there's another one here where you're running out of fuel and you've got a sort of glide it in and land safely uh, then you've got some other missions which I've not done yet to do with uh, I think freight moving and then you've got some taxiing stuff uh, and then an overpowered one over here so they're the missions I've not worked through those uh, but I will do in separate videos and then finally you've got the free flight and that's what we're going to look at today now inside the hangar itself you can see the modeling is pretty exquisitely rendered actually it looks absolutely beautiful uh, unfortunately I can't spin around this it's kind of fixed 
which makes me think it's a, a rendered, you know, auto desk kind of high resolution render and not actually a generated render. Uh, but you can choose between the Piper Alpha 18 and the Piper Cherokee PA28. I'm going to go with this in my free flight and you can pick the delivery that you want. We'll just go with the red one. Uh, onto the next page. There's only two aircraft in the whole thing at the moment. I don't know if that's the case on release. If we zoom right out here, you need to basically pick where you want to fly to and from. Uh, you can see it's got like a legend down the bottom showing you all the different VORs and that kind of thing. You can pick the weather. You can even load and save a plan. Uh, what I thought I'd do is I kind of zoom down here into the uh, into the UK. And um, we're going to do a quick VFR flight. Uh, what I thought we would do is... So there's South End. That's one of my local airports. Uh, there is Stansted Airport up there. Uh, that's the M11 running this way. Uh, Chelmsford, which is where I live, is, is more or less in this area here. Uh, this is London City. That's the Thames, and that's a Thames estuary coming in. What I thought we'd do is take off out of North Weald, which is um, an airstrip. There's a lot of private uh, private flying that goes on at North Weald, a lot of VFR type stuff, um, and in Cessnas and that kind of thing. I thought we'd sort of take off... Um, so maybe bank right, head south until we pick up the river, and then we'll fly on a heading of 270 and pick up London City. Uh, with this thing, you can create multi-drops, multi-point flights if you want to. I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to fly between North Weald and London City. London City is right next to Docklands. If you remember my x video where I took off out of London City and flew over to Heathrow, which is uh, over here, over west somewhere, where is it? Heathrow's there. I kind of flew that way. If you remember in that video, if you saw that one, if not, go and take a look because it's quite nice. <laughs> um, I'm going to choose weather. Uh, I'm just going to go for some, oh, I don't know, should we go? Let's go for clear weather and then we can actually see what's going on properly. Don't need to save. Uh, we can choose the time of day. I'm going to go for, well, today's day is the 18th, so we'll stick with the 18th. Don't want to do a night flight, to be honest with you. Let's go for, let's click on that, bring the time back to, I don't know. Four o'clock in the afternoon, let's say. Spring weather. Why not? Although technically... I suppose technically it's summer, isn't it? Well, according to this, it's not. May the 18th, four in the afternoon, that'll do. Let's go. Okay, I've got track IR turned on. Uh, so I'm just going to reset my track IR here. Uh, we're in the pre-flight setup stage here. We can abort. Uh, we can view our flight plan by clicking on this, as you see. Tells us what we already punched in. Uh, or we can just begin flight, in which case it'll start the aircraft and off we go. Now, as far as I can work out, there's no such thing as setting up cold and dark at the moment. Um, in fact, the master switches aren't even clickable. Uh, most of the stuff is clickable, but there's a lot of stuff which isn't. Uh, for example, you know, these, these here don't work. There's some autopilot stuff doesn't work. There's various switches down here that doesn't work. Uh, I guess what they've done is they've kind of aimed down the middle line if you've like they've given you enough stuff uh, but not everything so for example you know the the comm radio you can tune in the comm and that kind of thing uh, and even listen to the um uh, listen to the listen to the what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> the morse code that's thank you the morse code of uh, that identifies a vor station you can actually tune it in and then click on here and you can listen to it so all that works you know the the lights are down here, the fuel pump switches, the landing lights, which you can turn on or off. We can put them on like that if we want to. Uh, all that's on. Um, a lot of the buttons here are just not operational, as you can see. So it's not like an advanced aircraft or anything, but it's it's decent enough. Now, if we have a look where we are currently heading, we are heading on a, what is that, like a 120, sorry, a, a 02. And we know for a fact that we want to head roughly south, which is down this direction. So what we could do is... Put a little heading bug in here. I could have tuned in a VOR down south, but to be honest with you, it really isn't worth it, given the distance that we're going to go. It's a little bit awkward to sort of spin this thing around. But there we go, we're going to head on uh, a southerly, set, southerly aspect. Uh, this thing rotates at about 55 uh, knots. This is in knots. The other one is in miles per hour, interestingly enough. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to we're not going to use flaps, I'm going to full throttle it. And then we're going to turn on a heading south. There's also a compass here, which we can use if we want to. Uh, we're going to take off and 
fly roughly mm, two and a half or three and a half thousand feet. We've got a runway elevation here of 300. Uh, so let's just take off and then we'll rotate right and, uh, and head on a 180 course. Let's throttle it in. And that's full throttle. Air speed is alive. Air speed's here, that's 40. Coming up 50, 60. Uh, that should be good enough for a rotate. Right there. There's no retracting landing gear on this thing. It climbs at around 70, 75 knots is its optimum climb rate. Uh, so we're up. Passing 500, we're going to start rotating to the right now. Keeping that climb rate at about 70 miles, 70 knots, sorry, keep 70 miles per hour, that's the other one. Uh, and you can kind of get a feel for what the graphics are like on this thing. Um, I have to say, I've flown like dusk settings and the lighting is super weird on dusk. Like, you would expect it to look orangey and it actually goes like a strange blue kind of colour. Um, it, it really is rather odd. The clouds are also absolutely in quotes rubbish. They're, they're pretty basic FSX clouds. You know like really dark cotton wool buds don't look very good at all. I'll just trim up a little bit here. We'll get up to about two and a half, something like that. Let's keep going. And that should be plenty. We're now heading easterly so I'm going to bank a bit more. What you will notice I think is... I'll just run right out here because we're losing a bit of speed. There we go, let's keep it at 70. As you look into the... Look, there's the clouds, you see? Um, not good. Not good at all. Uh, I hope the actual flight simulator itself is much better than that. But you'll also notice on the ground, the way the haze works, is kind of overly cut. It's super grey, bordering on super blue, and... It just doesn't look natural to me. Bear in mind that we set it at 4 in the afternoon in May, on a clear day. Uh, that mist is just bizarre really bizarre and I think it's a trick I think it's the, it's the old graphics trick of kind of smoking everything out so that it doesn't look too aliased I think that's what it is if I'm being a little bit critical uh, the flight model bear in mind this is um, FSX heritage so the flight model is you know, behaves very similar to something out of FSX in VFR mode um, it's not probably not as alive as an X-plane should shouldn't be put it that way um, but if you look outside the window, you know, for a flight simulator school type thing, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I don't think the shadows are rendered because I noticed in a another flight, I'm heading south now, I noticed in another flight, um, so let me just level out, I don't want to get too high. I wanted to go two and a half, I'm now heading towards 3,000. Your engine is losing power because the mixture is not set correctly. Did I knock that? 100% mixture. Bizarre. There we go, 3,000. Um, yeah, I mean, the scenery is pretty decent, to be honest. Uh, like I say, I think that's the Orbex stuff that's been licensed uh, for use in the flight simulator. They obviously license it here. But if you notice the shadows on the trees, can you see that? Um, they pretty much always seem to point the same direction no matter where the sun is. The shadow from the plane renders correctly, but um, I don't think that does. But as I look from side to side, I'm pushing about 50 FPS at the moment. Which is not bad at all, but then again I don't really have any clouds either, and clouds tend to be one of the things that steals your frames, in my experience. So you would kind of expect a decent FPS. But, as I look outside, it kind of reminds me of your engine is in power, complete the action, press control X. Okay, let's press control X, see what that does. You set my mixture, pal, let me enjoy myself. Um, it's a flight sim school, is what it is. So for somebody who's just learning flight simulation, um, they'll probably think, wow, this is actually pretty decent, right? For somebody who likes a bit more seasoned, <laughs> if you want to use that word, I think you might be a little bit dissatisfied with 2016 flight simulation graphics like this. Um, it's pre-release, but I'm not really anticipating that to change. Look at the way that it goes grey towards the horizon in an unnatural way. It's almost like 
smog out of the 19th century England. Uh, I would prefer it if it didn't do that. I just think it, it just doesn't look natural to me. I would rather see it taper off into just greenness with a little bit of atmospheric scattering, but not to that level. Clouds, like I say, uh, just not that great. However, everything else is pretty decent. Like the model in here, in here is... Excuse me if I'm being critical, guys. I am being critical. I'm critiquing this thing right now um, as I'm looking around the cockpit. If you look outside on the road, the main road, you can see uh, uh, vehicles going down it. Uh, that's one of the main... Would that be the M11? Yes, that would be the M11 going towards London, I think. Possibly. But none of the side roads have vehicles on them, I noticed. Just the main motorways do. So, what it would look like at night, I don't know. I didn't really want to show you a night flight because, well, we want to see what the graphics look like in the day first. But there is a, a lesson that's a night flying lesson, so I could take that one and show you the night stuff. But this is meant to be a quick first look. Um, like I say, half of the buttons on here don't really work. Half of them do. The nav stuff and the comm stuff definitely works. The VOR stuff works. All of these dials all work correctly. But a whole lot of the buttons and more advanced features don't work. But that could have been a conscious decision because they took the view that um, somebody new to flight simulation wouldn't need those anyway. They wouldn't want to, to mess about with cold and dark starting. Uh, which is probably true. Probably, probably reasonable to do that. But the actual external rendering, as you can see, the texturing and the rendering on the aircraft is, is good. The problem is, I think, that the rendering on the aircraft is so good that it almost looks out of place when you pull up along the tarmac next to a low-res building. Uh, it kind of looks... there's kind of a juxtaposition between the two, which I don't like. Look ahead to the Thames. Can you see how brown and dirty and weird that looks? I mean, I know the Thames is not the best in the world uh, for cleanliness, but it certainly isn't like that on a clear day. It tends to have more of a green hue to it, especially so close to the estuary, which is over there somewhere. Um, the flood barrier is probably down... what would that be? Probably around here, actually. Where are we? London City is going to be over here to our east. Well, to the west, to our east. Uh, that's a westerly aspect, that's an easterly aspect, that's where the estuary comes in. Um, but, you know, all things aside, graphics aside, as a first product to teach somebody, I think what's more important, I mean, the graphics are good enough to teach somebody to fly. The flight model is okay. Not what I would call amazing. Not It's certainly not DCS or X-Plane quality. Uh, it is very more like a, an FSX under the hood kind of quality, and that's because it is, I think. Um, but to teach people to fly, I think it's fine. Graphics are fine, flight model's fine. Uh, there's enough here to, to keep any new person to flight simming busy. Uh, put it that way. Let me head that way now. Uh, we'll also start descending a little bit. Um, so I, in, in some sense, I'm being overly critical. What I am being, what I am worrying about though, is how this rings rings towards the future in terms of the, the new flight simulator products. Because my guess is this engine outside here is not going to change that much. I mean, maybe they'll upgrade it a bit. I don't know. Maybe they'll they'll bring in some um, some proper decent clouds rather than the the basic stuff they've got there. Or maybe they'll just leave that to third party developers. I don't, I honestly don't know how that's going to go. I'm sure we'll be able to make it better um, in the actual simulator with add-ons, but whether it will come out of the box remains to be seen. What's really important for a flight sim? Flight, a new flight simmer learning to flight sim in this thing though is what the lessons are like, what the missions are like, and how that runs. Um, I can tell you, having flown most of the, of the lessons now, uh, they vary between actually being pretty good and useful and learning quite a lot. Um, and I think some of them, particularly the VOR navigation one, is... No, it's just not good enough. It's, it's going to blow people's minds. They will not understand that lesson. Uh, it covers ground in a way that if you understand a lot of the terminology, then maybe you'll get it. If you've seen a VOR, um, you know, an OBS before, if you know how to use one of these things, then maybe you'll get it. But otherwise, you're just going to do what the guy tells you and not understand. So if you want to turn the selector knob, uh, he'll explain this a little bit, but you'll be looking at going triangle. Which triangle are we talking about? You know, what, what do you mean 3-3? Three, three? What's these numbers here? Um, I think people are going to struggle. 
Okay, so that is London City down there. We've got a visual on it. Uh, you can see the kind of the watercolour outside is probably not that far off what it is in London, to be fair. So those lessons, I think, you know, watch the videos. Watch the separate videos as I take you through. It goes from just taking off to holding a level flight to changing your altitude whilst maintaining a constant rate of descent and all this kind of thing. All great stuff. Uh, then it does a landing, which is a little bit odd, as you'll see in the video. I think the instructor's a little bit wrong, if I'm honest. The instructor can be really, really naggy at times. Um, and then you go to America, and the lessons in America are like another level up. Uh, the very first one out of, out of America has you doing a pattern flight around the runway. And uh, let me just say, it's pretty tricky in terms... For a, for a new simmer, it's pretty tricky. Uh, for a seasoned person, it's it's what you might call a bit interesting and a bit of a challenge. Um, because the guy is like, if you just stray outside of the parameters of the speed and the altitude, he'll just go, right, I'm taking control, that's into that, boom, start again. And then you find yourself taxing out again, and it's a little bit... I can see how that would put some from some new flight simmers off, let me put it that way. Um, but anyway, that being said, you can watch the videos and see what you think. I think this is a uh, a decent product, um, as I'm seeing it in the preview. That would be my assessment of it. I think if you're new to flight simulation, um, you might want to pick this up and get yourself through the lessons and do some free flight and just have some fun. Uh, the scenery is good enough that you know you're you're safe in the knowledge that you can buy this thing once, and not have to spend you know hundreds of pounds on add-ons to go and fly at your favourite airports and stuff. But you're only going to be flying VFR in two aircraft at the moment. Maybe there'll be more at release. Um, but it, you know it's good, it's decent. If you if you're a bit of a a flight simmer already, then I don't think there's much here for you. I think you can probably take your current flight sim and just. You know, you could probably just watch the videos that, I, that I'm that i going to make for you and go and recreate the same thing. Just go and do the same stuff in a flight sim. There's no reason why you can't do that. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking a little bit now because I want you to look outside. Uh, because you might have seen this on X-Plane when I did it. That is the, uh, the O2 Arena down there, which I've been to a few times. Uh, this is the Docklands over here on the right. And you can see uh, the tower blocks of the City Bank and HSBC and all that kind of thing. Often the distance, uh, it's not very clear day, but often the distance, almost straight ahead, you can almost make out the towers of the Battersea Power Station. So, you know, I can even see the Gherkin down there. Um, I can't see the Shard, funnily enough. Maybe they didn't have the Shard when they licensed this, uh, but I don't see the Shard anymore, which is pretty weird. The Shard is on the south bank, the south side of, um, of the river. I definitely don't see it, and I should be able to. But I can see the BT Tower down there in the distance. You probably don't know unless you know London skyline very well, but I know it pretty well. But, you know, if you look up closely, you can see the texturing, you can see weird stuff going on. Uh, look towards the riverbank there and, you know, it looks a bit clunky. But it's good enough for a flight sim, isn't it? It's good enough for a school, anyway. Uh, as we fly VFR, there's a crane down there. It's going to keep my altitude level here. Alright, we're going to make a fairly sharp turn now, we're going to swing it round and land it into London City and that's going to be the end of this. There's Tower Bridge down there and the various bridges. Millennium Bridge in the distance. But yeah, look straight on the wing there, there's like a weird rocky outcrop. Uh, and the water is, the texturing around there is pretty weird. Will it get any better for the flight sim? Who knows? Who knows? Time will tell. Right, let's throttle down. Let's get a flaps one going here. Now, London City has a five degree approach, and there's a reason for that, and that's mostly to do with all these cranes here. Uh, we can certainly handle five degrees in this thing. A normal aspect would be more like three. Our touchdown speed is around 60 knots. That's what we want to be aiming for when we come in. Um, but when we get ourselves lined up, we want to be full flaps down. Um, and our descent rate needs to be, you know, something around the 200 feet as we sort of approach the tarmac and then we can just pull back, throttle down a little bit and allow it to sort of touch down. I hope you've kind of enjoyed this kind of first look here. Um, I'm pulling about 40 frames at the moment, 40 FPS. 
bear in mind that I am recording, so I'm probably losing about five. Um, but I'm on a GTX 980 Ti, so that's pretty, not not the top end of the thing, but not far off. Okay, let's get four flats. But you know the frames, um, it, it never it's never really felt like it's stuttered or lost control. You know, it's, it's always felt reasonably okay. When you get outside of London itself, which is obviously very very built up, then you do find yourself up in the sort of 50 FPS mark. Sometimes even 70 when you're out in Arizona because there's nothing really there. You'll definitely have higher frames out in the in Arizona when you do the lessons than you will here. Look at the texture there. See how Minecraft it is? Okay. I'm not paying attention here. I'm looking at scenery. Okay. We got four flaps but we're not, uh, we're not lined up. But we are approaching our 60 knot speed. Good controlled descent going on. Just trimming up slightly so I can have a nice smooth transition in. Not much in the way of aircraft on the right, not much in the way of the buildings. You will definitely remember uh, the one I did on X Plane, if you saw that, had a lot more going on for it. But again, that was a, a dedicated airport that somebody'd made for free on X Plane. Throttle up a little bit, throttle down, sorry, and allow it to just touch down. There we go. Throttle back, start our cleanup. Nice smooth touchdown. See, see, flight hours logged one hour fifty five, but again, that's just free flight. That's um, not including all the lessons that I've done. Not to mention any lessons where I um, had to restart, which I did on some of them because. Like I say, some of them are pretty tricky, has to be said. And here we are, London City. Now the GA for this is all the way down the bottom there. But the important thing about this is that... I mean, I don't know how many airports they've actually dropped into here whether they've just got the main ones and whether the rest are just little grass strips and that kind of thing, but for a one-off price, it's not bad. I mean, they let you fly, by the looks of things, anywhere in the world, although admittedly, I've not actually tried to fly anywhere except the UK and the USA so far. So if you go and click on South America, I honestly don't know what you're going to see down there. I don't know how much the scenery is or how far it extends, how good it is. But out of the box, you get... A reasonable amount for your money. I think once you've gone through the lessons and the missions, which also look fun, maybe they'll add more for the final release, I don't know. Uh, once you've done that, you're going to be just doing free flights, and I think that's going to give you um, a reasonable platform to get going in flight simulation. So, all in all, you know, I think it's a decent product. I don't know what the price bracket's going to be. Like I say, they, they gave me this key to preview it, but I don't know what the final price is going to be for this thing or how much more they're going to add to it uh, on final, or whether they're going to do free DLC on top, I just don't know. I have no knowledge on that. But it's not bad. It's not a bad start to uh, somebody new to flight simming. And those lessons are pretty decent. But like I say, another option is to use your existing flight sim and you know maybe just watch the videos that I put out with the lessons and just go and pretty much reproduce the lessons. There's nothing to stop you doing that either. But the real flight sim comes later in the year. Uh, anyway, in the video description I shall leave links to the, uh, the the playlist of the lessons and stuff if you want to go and have a look at those things. Uh, let's just pull up there and set the parking brake. I don't know how to turn the engine off because the, the whole master switches seem to be... Maybe if we go for the fuel, fuel pump is currently off. Yeah, I just don't know. Don't know how we turn all that stuff off. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering why I've got the border up here, um, there's a very good reason for... I forgot to mention it actually at the start. There's a very good reason for why I am running it in a windowed mode. It's because when I ran it in full screen mode, I had screen tearing. And there doesn't appear to be a V-Sync option in the settings. I tried to create an NVIDIA Inspector profile. In fact, I did create one and forced V-Sync on, but it didn't seem to do anything. 
And the only way I could not have screen tearing was to go into windowed mode, which is what I've done. I've gone like a full screen window mode, but I can't get rid of the, uh, the strip at the top. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, but anyway, you can see that the actual rending on the aircraft is pretty decent. And then, well, then that. I mean, look at that. The texturing is so low res. But when you're up in the air, you can't really tell anyway. Maybe I'm being critical, overly critical. Maybe I'm speaking the truth. I don't know. Your mileage will vary. I'm just giving you my take on things. Oh, wow, look at the shadow. <laughs> well, that's an interesting shadow. Like I say, preview build. Do bear that in mind. So, yeah, expect some more videos on this, guys, as I work my way through the lessons and, uh, and even the missions, which some of those can be pretty tricky, let me tell you. Hope you enjoyed the intro, the first flight, the first look. Let me know what you think. Uh, drop me a like if you enjoyed the video, and remember the playlist is in the video description. Until the next video, guys, take care. Happy flying.